So uh, let's talk about the new PMP exam. The PMP exam is 180 questions. It has two 30 minutes to complete the exam. I'm going to talk about that, you know, how do you complete and stuff like that. And there are different type of questions. So previously, there used to be only radio buttons. Um, when I say radio buttons, that means only one choice is correct. So you have to select one. It used to be simpler. But now there are multiple choice, which means you can select, you have to select many. Um, so it would say, you know, select two or select three that applies. So the check boxes, or you would have mix and match these kind of um, questions. Some questions are fill in the blank question. Only one question is fill in the blank sort of out of 180 question. And then you would also have some questions, which is, you know, drag and drop questions. So there would be some item written here and then drag it wherever applicable. Again, very minimal type of question, one or two there. Uh, so the maximum set of questions, 80% of the questions are these. And then this would be somewhere around uh, 20, 19, 20% of the question. Rest of the questions, which I said, drag and drop and fill in the blank are just one, one, one each. You won't see many um, out there. Uh, the exam constitute of how many total questions? 180. 180 questions. So these 180 questions comes from different domains. So you have domains. I'm going to talk about domains later. These domains are people. That means how do you manage people? 42% of the questions would be how do you manage people? Process, how do you really do X, Y, Z? Those are 50% of the questions. How do you manage cost? How do you manage procurement? All of those questions going to be 50% of the total question. How does business involvement affect you as a project? Uh, those questions going to be 8% of the questions. So if I say 50% comes from process, total question from process would be how many? Uh, uh, total question 90. Good maths. Huh? Somebody said 80 as well. So 90 questions are going to be from process. Um, the examination report is going to be something like this. Um, the PMI would rate you under certain headings. There is no passing or fail percentage. Generally, people say 65% you know, is pass or less than that is fail. There is no percentage as such. Uh, it's not declared by PMI. It's something like your kid. Your kid goes to school and get A, B, C, D, right? Similarly, here, you don't get A, B, C, D, but you get uh, grades like needs improvement, which means you have failed. Uh, below target, that means you have failed. So this is fail. Um, if you pass or, you know, there is target and about target. About target is you know more than others, you know more than required, and target is you know enough, you, you have passed. Uh, so all of you, you have to get answers in this region. So you would be evaluated on all these three, and all these three, you're going to get about target, about target, about target. Okay, so all these three domains, it would be something like this. People, what was your, uh, you know, how did you qualify? Process, how did you qualify? Business environment, how did you qualify? And nowadays, PMI has started sharing bigger uh, elaborate report, you know, question-wise, which KPA did you, uh, did you answer? Was there a question in that or not? So you would get a detailed report. A combination of these, gonna make you fail or pass okay so if you get about target in all that means you're gonna definitely pass but if you get target here uh target here and below target here would you fail, fail or pass you might fail because process is 50 percent of the questions okay but let's say you got about target here, you got about target here, and here you got below target. You might pass because this is only 8% of the questions. Okay, 
So a combination of these is gonna help you pass off pain in total. My suggestion and my recommendation would be you try and get about target in all the domains. Okay, you will get about target. All my students get about target. So uh, the eco which I spoke about, eco is PMP exam content outline. It's it's it used to be there earlier as well. So whenever a person goes for PMP exam, they, these are guidelines by PMI that your exam gonna have 180 questions. These questions are divided into these domains and you would be assessed like this. So ECO is predominantly is the one which should be looked at before you start preparing for your exam. For you, I have looked at the ECO and uh, I have ensured that all the content is covered. The eco which is going on right now, which is in effect is eco which was updated in Jan 2021. Okay, this is the new eco which is there predominantly for you guys right now. If you ask me whether it's going to change in the next six months or so, it's not going to change. So you are safe for at least one year or so, nothing going to change. How do you pass your PFP exam? So you have to attend a workshop. The workshop which you attend is gonna give you 35 PDUs, which is essential for you to apply for the PMP application. So I would, I'm gonna give you 35 PDU. Once you get those 35 PDU, you anyway become a PMI member. Uh, you to assess access the LO choice, you would have become a PMI member. Now, when I say become PMI member, here you have to become paid member before you start filing your PMP application. I'll tell you when to. As of now, you don't have to. Before filing your PMP application, you pay and become a paid member so that here the payment would be 127 plus $10, and then your PMP examination fees would be 400 USD. Else, if you don't become a member, your PMP application fee is 555 USD, which is obviously if you do the maths, it's bigger than this. For India region, uh, it is I think some slightly less than 55 USD. It is uh, cheaper because India is a poor country. So you would have some concession. So once you file the PMP application, you need to schedule your exam, but schedule. Meanwhile, you would be doing test prep kit. Okay, the kit which I'm gonna enable you for. So here, once you keep on doing the test prep kit, 80%, when you start getting 80 to 85%, then only you schedule your exam. Once you schedule your exam, then you go and sit and pass the exam. You're gonna schedule only when you start getting 85% and above. Then only you go and schedule. Otherwise don't. You don't take a chance. You go through, study, restudy. I'll ensure that you understand the concept. And then it's just a matter of practice and nothing else. Any question? I'll be talking about how do you prepare, which venue should you do home or center, all that on the last day. The PAP exam is 230 minutes of duration. It is divided into three sections. So what does it mean is you would have 60 questions in one section and so 60, 60, 60. There's a break of 10 minutes, which are given after you complete 60 questions. There's a break, optional break of 10 minutes, which are given to you if you do. So 10 minutes here, 10 minutes here. Total duration of the total um, you know, examination time is 230 minutes. There is no time limit on how would you complete your section per se, which means if you finish this section in 80 minutes, it is fine. Or if you take full 230 minutes to finish section A, nobody's going to stop you. Okay? So you decide when to finish which section. At any point of time, only one section is going to be visible for you. So for example, if you start your PMP exam, this section is going to be visible for you. Total 60 questions. You can move forward and backward, only 60 questions. 
once you click on submit here then if you are at home the proctor is gonna say okay there is a 10 minutes of break do you want to take avail that or do you want to start should i start the next section if you are in prometric section if you are in a center then they're gonna ask you so you can you you have a choice then you come back after 10 minutes optional break section b gonna be open for you again 60 minutes move forward backward take whatever number of time you need to take so i'll talk about you know diligently how much time should you take later so again then you click on submit here go out for a break and then third section gonna be open for you 60, 60 questions up and down and then submit and then your result will be shown on the total exam there and then okay you have 180 question i told you that mix of question i told you that three domains i told you about these are randomly generated questions so in case all four of you go in one center and you think of cheating jenny's questions are going to be different than gaurav's vilas questions are going to be different than swami's okay you can't say are question number third ka answer batao not going to happen okay the different type of questions and different questions all together so the question comes from a thousand of question pool which is available at pmi if you are sitting here 180 question comes from this pool another person 180 question so each question is um you know weighted question which means each question pmi does some kind of weighting criteria so each question would be um they have not disclosed us for the simplicity i would say they would have a complexity of you know this is simple question this is medium questions or this is very complex question um so if you get let's say janice get all the questions which are complex questions in her exam the passing percentage required for her would be low because she got all the complex questions if got to get all the easy questions in this exam then the requirement for him to pass would be slightly high because you got easy questions so that's the reason pmi does not disclose as to what is the passing percentage okay so don't worry about it for you you have to give all the answers um rightly this is rating based system i told you about the ratings what are those needs improvement below target on target and about target there is no negative marking okay there are 25 pre test questions what are those questions these questions are it used to be 25 now i think 22 or something these are questions which are not tested by which are not marked uh, these are questions which are in trial by pmi that means whatever answer you're going to give pmi not going to recognize that pmi used those questions out of one out of 180 questions you would have these questions as pre-tested question um, so even if you give wrong answers to those questions that's all right because pmi has introduced those new questions to see how these questions are performing they would change their language or rate them into difficulty level later and put them as the main questions in the other people exam but you have no way of knowing which ones are those pre-test questions okay for you all the questions are valid questions and all the questions you have to give the answers to otherwise you're gonna fail okay any question okay. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, can we give an exam from home? Yes, you can give the exam from home. You have the option. Okay. 